So I want to talk about the chain rule. And one of the most important aspects of the chain rule is simply knowing when to use the chain rule and when not to use the chain rule. So if you look at the very first problem I have here, f of x equals 3x squared, this is a problem that is non-necessary to use the chain rule. So if you wanted to find the derivative of this, it would just be f prime of x equals, and you use the power rule. So you do 2 times 3 is 6, and then you reduce the power by 1. So you've got 6x, and when you reduce the power by 1, it'll be to the first power. And so generally, we don't write 6x to the first power. We'd write f prime of x equals 6x. And this would be the slope of your tangent line, your derivative. Okay, in that case, we didn't need the chain rule. Okay, on this example here, you've got what's inside this parentheses raised to the first power. Now, generally, when something's raised to the first power, you don't even write it. So it's the same as f of x equals 4x minus 2. And then when we have something in parentheses, but the exponent is 1, then we can just write it as f of x equals 4x minus 2. And now in this case, we can just find the derivative of this term and this term, and that'll be the answer. So in this case, I'll have f prime of x equals, and the derivative of 4x is just 4, and the derivative of negative 2 is 0, and so my derivative would be f prime of x equals 4. Okay, so so far we haven't used the chain rule. Now, let's say I have f of x equals 4x minus 2, but instead of being to the first power, I say to the second power. Now, you may be asking, well, why don't I just square this? In other words, why don't I just write 4x minus 2 and multiply it by 4x minus 2 again? Okay, so I could FOIL this function. So I'd have f of x equals 4x times 4x is 16x squared. 4x times negative 2 is negative 8x. And then I have negative 8x again and positive 4. And so my function f of x would equal 16x squared minus 16x plus 4. And then you say, why don't you just use the power rule on each term? Just take the derivative of this term, take the derivative of this term, and take the derivative of this term. Now, that would work great, okay? That idea would work wonderful. But here's the problem, okay? Well, let's finish this problem first. So that gives me f prime of x equals 32x minus 16. So the derivative of this is 32x, the derivative of this is negative 16, and the derivative of that is zero. So that would be your derivative using the power rule. And so you'd be correcting saying, well, what's the point of the chain rule? Well, here it is. Let's say instead of f of x being 4x minus 2 to the second power, let's say I make it to the 90th power. So what are you going to do now? Are you going to rewrite this as 4x minus 2 times 4x minus 2 and do that 90 times, okay? And that's the issue. That's the reason why we need the chain rule. We, we're not going to foil 90 times. And so the chain rule is useful when you have an inside being raised to the outside exponent. And so what we're going to do here, let's rewrite this problem, f of x equals 4x minus 2 to the 90th. Let's just clear it up. And in front of the x, uh, parentheses is understood to be a 1. Okay, now remember what I said. The chain rule, the most difficult part of the chain rule is just knowing when you need it. So in this case, we would need it. And so I've got f prime of x equals, and now what you do is you treat this you treat this like it's all just an x. Some people will substitute this with a u called u substitution. So we're going to treat this like this is an x. So let's look at it like this. Let's look at it as if f of x equaled 1u to the 90th power. 
So what I did was I took everything in this parentheses and just called it a U. Okay? And so if I was finding the derivative of this function, I'd do 90 times 1 is 90, and then I'd reduce the power by 1, and it'd be 89. So in our function here, I'd have 90 right here, 90 times 1, which is 90. And then I, I don't change this. I just write 4x minus 2, and I reduce the power by 1, so that's going to be to the 89th power. Now, here's the chain part. What you haven't done is you have not calculated the derivative of what's on the inside. So now what you'll do is multiply the derivative of the inside of your function, and that's just 4. So the derivative of 4x minus 2 is just 4. And so now you've completed the chain rule, and all you have to do is simplify. And so all I have left is I've got to multiply this 90 times this 4, and I'll be done. And so I've got f prime of x equals 4 times 90. 9 times 4 is 36, so it's 360 times 4x minus 2 to the 89th power. And so that is your derivative using the chain rule. Let me write it one more time a little cleaner. And so our original function was f of x equals 4x minus 2 to the 90th power. And our derivative, f prime of x, was this right here, 360 times 4x minus 2 to the 89th power. That's our derivative. So that's the slope of the tangent line everywhere. Now let's be clear about why that's beneficial. Okay? Remember in the beginning, now I didn't have to go 4x minus 2 times 4x minus 2 times 4x minus 2 and do that 90 times in order for me to do the power rule. Okay? Because I know the chain rule, I now know that this function has a derivative that's this, and I only know this because of the chain rule.